Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, I'm an indie game developer and I'm currently working on my shoot 'em up roguelite game called Osor. Today I want to have a look at one very important, maybe even the most important aspect in art. And that's color. Color can do multiple things when they are chosen right, make your art look much nicer to look at. Another thing is that color can decide which mood your picture has. For example, when you take this water scene here, the colors directly tell the person that looks at it that this place here is somewhere in the ocean and it's a safe place, isn't it? On the other hand, you have the same scene as before but with more red and purple colors. It feels less safe now with like some hidden danger sitting behind the walls and it can take a bit longer for the viewer to get that this place should be somewhere in the ocean. But now let's get to the three properties of a color that let a color look like how it is looking. These three properties are called U, Saturation and Lightness. Let's have a look at the U first. So basically U is what color it is. Based on the value of the U you get different colors as results. So you see this little graph here and when I increase or decrease the value of the U, you see the color changes. Next there is saturation. And this is probably one of the things you will hear the most. Basically it's how intense your color is. It won't change the U or how light or dark your color is. It's just how much color there is. I've got all these strokes and they are slowly getting desaturated to the right. So the very left one is 100% saturated and the very right one is 0% saturated. So it's just a simple gray. And this concept applies to every single color. And here a quick tip with saturation. When you want your illustration to have an atmospheric horror-like style, then keep the saturation generally low. But then you put in a few little more saturated pops of color here and there. However, if you want to make a more happy illustration, then keep the saturation pretty high. And last but not least, we've the third property of color, which is the lightness. This is simply how light or dark a color is. It doesn't change anything with the U and saturation again, only the lightness. So basically, you're just adding white or black to the color. So when I increase the lightness, you can see it's getting closer to white. The same with decreasing the lightness, but here you can see it's getting closer to a black. Also you can split the lightness into two more terms. And these are, when you make the color darker, you can call it a shade. And when you make it brighter, you can call it a tint. So these are the properties that you can change for a color. Now let's get to how colors can work with each other. This is called color groups. There are many, many color groups, but I only get to the most common and most important ones. Color groups can sound a bit complicated for you at first, but once you understand it, it's pretty easy. Basically, color groups are just color schemes. You can simply use them as a palette for your artwork, game or anything you want to create. It's just a way that colors can look nice together and interact with each other. So what I made right here is a monochromatic color scheme. Here you just take one color, for example a blue, and then you change the lightness and saturation for the other colors on the color wheel. So if you follow the scheme, you make an illustration only out of blue, red, green, yellow, etc. And these modified versions on the saturation or lightness of themselves. Next there are analogous color schemes. And that's simply which color is next to each other. So I made this little color wheel here. And this analogous color scheme is just picking three colors that sit next to each other. And they will always work perfect with each other. As they are pretty close to each other. So right here I just picked red, pink and blue. And then this is an analogous color scheme. And of course this applies for the complete color wheel. So I could take red, orange and yellow, or purple, blue and green, and much, much more of course. 
Then another color scheme is the complementary color scheme. In my opinion, this is a tiny bit more tricky scheme for complete beginners, so I wouldn't really recommend it, but give it a try anyway. Maybe it works for you better as it did for me when I started out. But anyway, it's basically just two colors that are opposite each other. You can find this scheme mostly in movie posters. One combination that may be familiar to you is yellow or orange together with blue. And this is actually a complementary color scheme. Next there is the triadic color scheme. Actually this is just making a triangle on the color wheel. And you can see I simply selected orange, purple and green. And these colors work awesome with each other. So make a triangle and when you rotate this from the middle point, you always get a triadic color scheme. Another one is the tetratic color scheme. This is basically the same as the triadic one, but instead of a triangle you use a square. It's also pretty similar to the complementary one because you've got two colors and then the two that are opposite to the two you already have. These are actually the core ones that you're gonna need on your journey. And to be honest, you don't really think about the theory later on. You just get a feel and you still apply it, but as said, you don't really actively think about it. But now let's get to one of the most important parts and this is color language, which is the meaning behind colors. A lot of people don't understand that colors are chosen for a very specific reason and, and this is what I told at the beginning of the video with the example with the ocean scene. Many people probably have heard that art can tell complete stories, which is seen in many games, but what most people don't know that besides the shapes used in a character or object, the color has to do with that as well. In fact, it tells more of the story than other things in a character or object. So now let's get to the meanings. So first, red is commonly used to provide danger, hate, but also passion. That's why most of the evil characters in animated movies or games have red in its design. Then orange provides energy and creativity. Yellow conveys activity and happiness. That's why people like to draw the sun in an intense and bright yellow. Then green is commonly linked to healing and nature. That's why healing upgrades in games are often green. Then there's purple which stands for wealth, ambition but also secrets because it's a pretty mystical color. And then blue which stands for calm, wisdom but also safety. That's why I picked the ocean example at the beginning of the video and magicians often wear blue clothes in movie or games. And lastly, black stands for death, sadness, but in a few cases power as well. And white stands for beauty and peace. Then there is another thing which is warm and cold colors. This is the temperature of your illustration and this gives the viewer some more emotions. Warm colors are yellow, red and orange and cold ones are green, blue and purple. But sometimes a shade or a tint can make it that colors count to a warm or cold even the base color is the opposite. And this is what you need to know about colors. Now let's jump into your drawing software and experiment with the things you learned in this video. Art is a huge topic for sure, but when you understood colors you have mastered a huge aspect of art. And even you don't have good drawing skills, with good colors your game still looks real nice. With that said, if you want to learn more art and animation related tutorials, I would highly appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. See you next time, cheers!